Hello and welcome to Astronomy Toronto, the Rogers Cable TV monthly astronomical news magazine produced by the Toronto Centre of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. My name is Michael Watson, I'm a member of the RESC and your host for this edition of Astronomy Toronto. Well, we're here tonight to describe a uh, very wonderful trip that several members of the RESC took this past March to view a very rare kind of eclipse of the sun in equatorial Africa, in particular in Gabon. And I have in the studio as my guest with me tonight uh, uh, someone who's been on Astronomy Toronto many times before, a veteran eclipse observer, Robert May. And Bob, uh, welcome back to Astronomy Toronto. Thank you, Michael. We had, uh, we had a quite a time in Gabon this, this past March, didn't we? Yes, we certainly did. It was a very exciting event and, uh, as you pointed out, a very rare one. What I'd like to do at the beginning is just uh, familiarize our listeners with what e solar eclipses are. Can you describe in layperson's terminology just what is an eclipse of the sun? It's essentially the moon moving in front of the sun as seen from a point on Earth. And the Earth and the moon and the sun have to be lined up, of course. And this is an event that only occurs at new moon. Well, Bob, there are different kinds of uh, partial, uh, different kinds of solar eclipses, and, and partial eclipses uh, are one kind. The first photograph uh, that we've brought tonight to show is a photograph of a partial eclipse. Perhaps you could describe for the viewers just what we see here. Uh, what we're seeing in the lower half of the picture is the moon moving in front of the sun. Uh, the sun, of course, is the yellow gold part above the dark bottom edge. And uh, we can see the moon just about to encroach on what appear to be some sunspots. And uh, we can see, therefore, the, the bright surface of the sun. And, and are the sunspots then those little black uh, sort of splotches that appear? Yes, on? that's right. And um, how long does a partial eclipse last? Is it over immediately, or does it last some length of time? No, uh, a partial eclipse can last uh, uh, for anywhere from several minutes to uh, up to three hours. And during that time, the moon is passing progressively across the face of the sun? Yes, it is. Um, you and I saw a solar eclipse, one of many that we've seen together, in Indonesia in June of 1983. Mm -hmm. And I've brought a series of photographs of uh, the partial phases of that eclipse. Uh, perhaps you can describe, as we see these photographs, uh, what we're seeing, if we can bring the first one up. This, uh, of course, is the partial phase, and this is the moon passing over the surface of the sun uh, progressively getting closer and closer towards totality, which is the entire covering of the solar surface by the moon. And what do we see and here? And here we see the moon moving off the sun's surface, as it were, uh, coming towards the end of the eclipse. And at that eclipse, uh, as I recall, the partial phase from beginning to end lasted a total, as you said, of mm -hmm. about three hours. That's correct, it did. Now, you've been to see several eclipses. Can you remember how many you've, you've uh, observed? Well, I've, yes, I've been to see six um, that I can recall quite vividly. And I remember seeing a partial eclipse when I was very young in England. And uh, I've seen several with you. And we travel all over the world to, to see these eclipses. Why do astronomers travel so far to see an eclipse <laughs> of the sun? Well, it's the most exciting event in nature, I think. Well, having seen several, I, I think I, I definitely agree with you. Um, what I'd like to do now is, is describe the next kind of, of eclipse, um, the central solar eclipse, where they, as seen from the Earth's surface, the moon passes uh, directly in front of the sun, and it produces two different kinds of eclipses, one called an annular and one called a total. And perhaps briefly, you could describe what the difference is between those. Well, uh, an annular eclipse is where the moon is closer to Earth, than it could be on some occasions, and appears not to cover the entire sun's surface. It's a phenomenon that the moon and the sun appear to be about the same angular diameter on the sky, even though the um, sun is about 400 times farther away than the moon. And uh, when uh, the moon, in fact, is farther away from the Earth and in front of the sun, it leaves a thin annulus of light, sunlight, around the surface of the moon. This is what we call an annular eclipse. So that's when the moon is further from the Earth than normal. Yes. And what about if an eclipse happens when the moon is closer to the Earth than normal? Then we uh, experience what is called a total eclipse. And the uh, moon's diameter is apparently bigger than the sun's diameter, and thus obscures the sun from our view completely. And uh, it's the total eclipses that we travel to see. That's right, because it uh, offers many more exciting events to witness. Right. 
Um, uh, the next photograph is one that uh, shows partial, uh, several partial uh, phases uh, of the same eclipse over a map of the United States. And what does this show? Uh, this shows that uh, the moon can appear, the sun rather, can appear d uh, differently obscured by, uh, by the moon from different parts of the United States. Um, an observer in several different positions can see the same eclipse different ways. Well, I've uh, also brought now three photographs from a total eclipse that you and I observed in Papua New Guinea in November of 1984. And uh, we see here the first one. What do we see? This is called the diamond ring effect, and it occurs when the moon is almost completely covering the sun's surface, just leaving perhaps the uh, sunlight streaming through a valley of a mountain range on the moon. And then a few seconds later, this next photograph shows the phenomenon that we really travel the long distances to see. What do we have here? This is corona, and this is the sun's atmosphere that can only be seen during a total eclipse. And uh, the next photograph show with a, a shorter telephoto lens shows the same effect? This is the same effect, but uh, obviously spreading out much farther over the sky's surface up to uh, three solar diameters. And it's quite a fascinating yeah. phenomenon. It is indeed. It is. The very fine structure is really interesting to see. Now, there's another kind of solar eclipse, and this is the kind that we went to see in Gabon this year, very unusual, one that is called a beaded eclipse. Um, it occurs when the moon is at that portion of its orbit where it's sort of halfway between perigee and <coughs> apogee, and it almost but not quite covers the bright surface of the sun. And at the instant of mid-eclipse, there's a razor-thin annulus or ring of sunlight left around the moon, but the mountains on the edge of the moon break that annulus up into uh, dozens of diamonds. Uh, the first time this was observed in this century was in 1966, and there are two photographs that uh, we have here. The first one, uh, which was taken from Greece, uh, shows, uh, Bob, the diamonds around the edge of the moon. Mm -hmm. And the uh, second one, what do we see in the second one? In the uh, picture on the left-hand side, we see the sun uh, again partially obscured by the moon. The moon is actually moving off and has covered the apparent right-hand side of the sun and exposed coronosphere corona around the left-hand edge. Then in 1984, uh, we uh, managed to see another uh, beaded solar eclipse. The map that uh, we're going to show next shows the path of this e eclipse across North America. In the next slide, we see that the partial phase was visible over almost all of North America, and the path of the annular phase went up over Mexico and Florida and the Carolinas. And I brought two photographs uh, of the diamond um, necklace effect as seen in, on May 30th. And the first one, we seem to have uh, a lot of dazzling sunlight left uneclipsed. Oh, well, we do, and this, of course, is the uh, lunar valleys uh, through which the sunlight is streaming. Uh, this occurs because the uh, moon is marginally smaller than the apparent size of the sun. And the second photograph shows the same thing. This is the true central phase of that eclipse. All right, so uh, with that uh, background, we then uh, decided that we had to go to Gabon to see the next uh, uh, eclipse in this series. So join us now as we take you to Equatorial Africa, the Republic of Gabon, to see the diamond necklace. Here we are flying over Cameroon. It's coming into Duwala. Bob, we brought along some still photographs to give a bit of an introduction to the country, and uh, here we see a statue of Omar Bongo, the uh, dictator of Gabon. And as in a lot of West African states, uh, they're uh, militarily based, and uh, a lot of that, the money that's uh, raised by high prices goes to support exquisite pieces of architecture, such as you see here. 
One of the uh, places that we visited in central Gabon is the Eglise Saint-Michel, uh, which is a church in the center of Gabon, where we had our first picnic lunch, a really pretty building. It really was. Uh, again, to uh, make a comparison, here is uh, something at the other end of the cost scale that uh, some of the more unfortunate people have to live in. But uh, as always, uh, one of the great things about visiting foreign countries is meeting the people and especially the, the children who are always very interested in us and we in turn with them. Well, that's right. The kids are always a delight. Trilling. Looking for something to eat. Oh, that is fantastic. Give me a kiss. Didn't you? you don't have anything to eat for you, sweetie. No. Oh. Come on. This is Monkey in Low Pro. This is terrific. Monkey investigating filter. Look at that, look at that. Oh, Robert, that is fantastic. Oh, I don't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> that's, that's a Kodachrome 64 monkey. Oh, I just love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> Aren't you going to turn around? I think he likes you. Yeah, he oh. seems to want to look out toward the sea. I don't know why. He's optimistic. He's looking for clear skies. I think Always that's right. He's an, he's an eclipse monkey. No doubt about it. Okay. We got a little bit of cloud there actually right through the window. However, going over to the east, we've got some nice clear sky there. That's what we want for tomorrow. Now, Bob, on the morning of Eclipse Day, we uh, boarded an aircraft and took a one-hour flight to the city of Port Gentil, which is the second largest uh, city in uh, Gabon and is right lo located right on the coast. And uh, when we arrived there at the airport, we rented a car in which to put all our equipment to transport it to the Eclipse site. As you can see, we didn't come lightly loaded. Port Gentil is the oil drilling and oil refining capital of Gabon and is really the only industrial city uh, located in Gabon. Uh, interesting view here of the oil derricks and ships. Great weather here, just north of Port Gentil at the Nova Novotel Hotel here. And there are many, uh, a lot of people set up. Jacques Gatin from California, his crew. Wendy Carlos is there, setting up her equipment. Sometimes there can be cooling because of the eclipse, which will cause the And of course, the irrepressible John Beatty from New York City. Mr. Corona. And. Our own Robert May. Bear some more eclipse goers. Including a Japanese contingent. <laughs> and this is the beach that we're on. Oh, 
lots of these enormous logs, which may be the Gabon logs that give the country its name. They're all over the place. A little bit windy. Some eclipse goers on their backs. What can you get? Among the eclipse goers at our site was a friend of yours and mine, Bob, uh, Huguette Gertin from California. She is a very well-known and avid eclipse photographer and has her, had her photographs published on the covers of many astronomy magazines. But aren't you looking through it? Momentarily. Yeah, just before the first one, which was about two But she didn't look before. afterwards. Then after that, I have no time. She didn't look after that. So I just cost, oh, closed the I main understand. Tree, she didn't have to look right. I just keep on going. Normally there'd be no need. Sure, you'd be yeah. tracking right along. Yeah, she was tracking well earlier. Oh, I guess what, that's she was dead on. Yeah. This is a reclining Bob May eclipse pose. As you well know, Michael, my favorite eclipse telescope is my three and a half inch Questar, which you see here, mounted on a Takahashi Sky Patrol with a Canon F1 as the uh, photographic instrument. And the sun was so obscure behind the clouds that I had to cover my head up with a blanket in order to, to see it through the viewfinder. master at his work. Good portrait of Jacques. These are the Jacques Gertin knee pads. Oh, every good eclipse uh, score needs. Uh, Stylishly green. Uh, this is a pose we've adopted many times, Michael, behind our eclipse banner. This shows all of the uh, eclipses that we've been to over the years, including the most recent one in 1984. The solar eclipse, it looks a little cloudy here. In fact, I have even set up my five inch refractor, the main telescope. I've simply put on a 500 millimeter lens and a two times tele extender, and I'm shooting at 1,000 millimeters right on the tripod. It's not the greatest weather for an eclipse. As you can see, it's blowing pretty, pretty steadily, too. And we got some real definite clouds uh, from the west and a, a very steady wind from the west. We may see some beads, maybe not. I doubt that we'll see any chromosphere or anything like that. But we'll see. We're now about, uh, we're now 15 minutes or 16 minutes from mid eclipse. Well, we're back in the studio now. Bob, from those slides and the video, it, uh, we certainly didn't have good weather on, on eclipse morning. Were we lucky enough to see it? Well, yes, we were. And I was uh, very pleased that we were able to, in spite of the weather conditions that prevailed beforehand. It, uh, it seemed that the cloud was coming and going during the entire eclipse, during mm -hmm. the partial phases and then during the Yes, it was. In, in fact, it was very difficult to see the partial phases. I remember at one time having a a blanket more or less over my head trying to look find the sun in the uh, in the eyepiece but uh, for the uh, 20 to 25 seconds or so that uh, we did manage to see it around uh, mid annularity the cloud broke up sufficiently for us to photograph it it was quite exciting well photo i know from personal experience that photographing this kind of eclipse is very very difficult uh, I've seen your photographs. I'm really excited by them. I think they're terrific. Oh, thank you. Um, you certainly established your place as, uh, as one of the cities or the country's best uh, eclipse photographers. You've brought some of them tonight to share with us, and maybe we can bring up the first slide, and you can describe what we're seeing here in your photographs. Okay. Um, here we see uh, beaded annularity, the, sun the sunlight streaming through the valleys on the moon again. And this series of photographs was taken over a very few seconds in time because the uh, reaction is very quick uh, with respect to the moon passing in front of the sun. This, the, the geography is such that uh, the moon's valleys are constantly changing and uh, consequently the beading appears in a different place in every subsequent photograph. And we can see that certainly here. That this looks dramatically different. Can we, can we also see cloud here? Yes, I think so. Uh, 
at one point there was cloud cover which uh, threatened to um, make our whole journey worthless but fortunately it moved off and we were able to see it and you've got uh, I think three more uh, all uh, again very similar uh, but the uh, beading occurring at different places on the annulus these uh, Bob I must say these are really spectacular because it really shows why this phenomenon is called the diamond necklace mm -hmm. really beautiful well, you're really to be congratulated on those. And here we can see some Thank cloud you. definitely going, uh, yes. shooting through some yeah. heavy cloud. It, it was heavy. And uh, fortunately, the uh, sunlight was brilliant enough without a filter that we could, in fact, see the beating. Well, we, we really were lucky. I um, took a telescope, which I didn't actually set up. I used a, a telephoto lens because I really wasn't too sure whether we were going to see it or not. I brought a series uh, of photographs as well, which um, show the progression of the moon across the sun. I used, if we can bring up the first one, I used a, a shorter length telephoto lens to photograph um, this uh, eclipse. And you'll see in, in this series of photographs how the uh, moon, first of all, is just off the central part of the sun and then as it moves across, and you'll see that I'm shooting here through some fairly heavy cloud. This is probably, oh, I'd say, what, 40 seconds before mid-eclipse? Yes. You, you sort of lose track as, yeah. as you're taking these photographs. And uh, here we see the diamonds that are starting to appear at the, at the very edge and moving along in this sequence. Next photograph, we start to get the diamonds breaking through on the left edge to start to form the diamond necklace. Next uh, frame, we see the, the true central phase uh, you can see that with the, the clouds, there's a lot of flaring. It's difficult to get a very crisp image. And then the, uh, the, just at the end of the diamond necklace uh, effect, you see the last two beads on the, uh, the upper right-hand corner. And finally, uh, the last two frames. This is all taking place within a period of about 30 to 40 seconds. And finally, the very uh, last uh, part of the uh, eclipse, we can see the pinkish chromosphere around the upper right and then the brilliant sunlight breaking through, and that was the, uh, that was the eclipse. That was it. So Bob, after a, a spectacular uh, adventure like that, and uh, for this uh, eclipse trip, where do we go next? When's the next one? Well, next March, we're going to be in the Philippines uh, to see, uh, I hope, some three minutes and 18 seconds of totality. Well, that's right. Uh, the next solar e eclipse is a total solar eclipse visible in the Philippines. The Toronto Centre of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada is mounting a major expedition to view this eclipse. Uh, weather predictions indicate that it is uh, going to be uh, probably very clear, very good weather. It's a lengthy total eclipse and it should be quite a spectacular sight. For any people who have never seen one of these phenomena who would like to join the expedition, please get in uh, contact with the Toronto Centre of the RESC, care of the McLaughlin Planetarium. And we hope to see you on the eclipse trip in the Philippines next year. So thank you very much for joining us for Astronomy Toronto. My name is Michael Watson. See you next time.